Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is two neutron stars colliding. This is the simulation from the event we observed back in 2017. Here's another way of looking at this event in slightly slower motion with two pulsars slowly coming closer and closer together. But as you can probably tell from the title, we finally observed that one event we still haven't seen, the neutron star black hole collision. Now, okay, we didn't really see see it, we didn't really look at it, we've detected it using the super famous LIGO detector. The 4 km long laser tube that's responsible for detecting a lot of collisions that generated so-called gravitational waves that we were able to see through the oscillations and movements in those lasers. So, very recently, I've talked about GRACE database, the uh, gravitational wave detection database that's available to all researchers and um, it essentially combines all of the data that we've collected from various detectors where it can be then analyzed and further expanded upon. It's sort of like the open source version of gravitational waves. And it's been getting updates pretty much several times a day on various detections, but most interestingly on April 25th and April 26th two major detections occurred and one of them was very unusual. Specifically this one from April 26th that may have occurred approximately 1.2 billion years ago at a distance of 1.2 billion light years away from us. In other words, approximately 500 times as far away as the Andromeda galaxy. And this particular detection is currently classified as a black hole neutron star collision simply because of the masses involved and of the data we've detected. Okay, so how do we know that it's a black hole and a neutron star? I mean, it's a gravitational wave, right? Well, it really has to do with the masses of the objects. Neutron stars, like the one that you see right here that's simulated in Space Engine, this is our best simulation to date, actually, um, normally have a very specific mass. It cannot be over a certain number. Specifically, um, we expect them to be about maybe two masses of the sun, maybe th even three masses maximum, but after a certain mass, they don't exist. They usually just go supernova and explode or collapse into black holes. So if we detect a, a collision between two objects and one of them has a mass of, let's say, one and a half masses of the sun, but the other one, is about five or even more masses of the sun, and in this case, it's a black hole. Um, in this case, we can kind of assume that, well, it's very likely that one of them was a black hole, but the other one, because of the low mass, was probably a neutron star. And this is exactly how the scientists came up with this value of 49% of this being a black hole neutron star collision. And the three observations of this particular event were so accurate that the scientists even identified the location in the night skies where this event probably occurred and the location is identified as approximately 3% of the night skies. So this is a very accurate and very precise observation that suggests we were pretty much correct with most of the analysis and it's probably a neutron star and a black hole colliding. Now, unfortunately, no supernova or any kind of electromagnetic radiation was detected. So in that sense, we don't really know what happened afterwards. We have no idea what remains behind. We don't know if this created an even larger black hole or if the neutron star um, fell apart and created the accretion disk around the black hole and then basically disappeared. Our current models suggest that if a black hole and a neutron star collide, they should technically create a much, much bigger black hole. But it's also possible that during the collision, this stretched to the point of becoming some kind of an unusual neutron-based and quark-based accretion disk that we've never seen before. So we don't really know exactly how it occurred and what happened, we just know that it did happen. And because we expected this event to occur, we now just need to collect more data to determine how often these events happen. Now obviously one day we'll detect a neutron star black hole collision where some kind of radiation is produced and potentially either a hypernova or some kind of a strange supernova will be seen by the scientists. But until that happens, we don't really know the results of this very catastrophic and very interesting event. On the other hand, we also don't know how these two stars um, started orbiting each other to begin with. On the one hand, they could have been both very large, very massive stars and both experienced a supernova, 
then turning into these collapsed objects, a black hole and a neutron star, that slowly approached each other and then collided with each other. On the other hand, maybe they were two separate objects, traveling the galaxy far, far away, and then by sheer luck approached each other close enough where the collision occurred. In other words, this event, even though it was detected, still has a lot of mysteries behind it. It's maybe not as exciting as the first ever neutron star collision or the first ever black hole collision because those two events allowed us to first of all study the gravitational waves but second of all allowed us to understand that a lot of heavier elements of gold are produced during these events. This one was more quiet. It's very mysterious, very unusual and probably very rare but it's an event that will help us understand how the universe evolves over time and what happens when a black hole meets a neutron star. But just not yet. And so let's just simulate this event in Universe Sandbox and see what happens when this neutron star falls into a slightly bigger and slightly more massive black hole. And just like that, it just got absorbed. And anyway, so on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the actual um, database that I mentioned in the description below. And as new things are detected by LIGO, they always get updated and posted there very regularly and usually up to date. And although originally we thought we were only going to have these once a week, in the last few weeks or so, we've been detecting things several times a week and almost daily. So on that note, um, this actually means that these collisions happen very frequently and we're definitely going to see another black hole neutron star collision probably within a year or so. Let's find out when this happens again. And until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the universe and space from this video. And if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. Thank you for everything. Bye-bye.